Hey everybody. So I am back today just doing a quick discussion on my beginnings of the Sarissa Precision Barn for their North American line in 28mm. Um, this is the cover of the kit. Um, and you can see here it's just basically titled Barn in the North American uh, range 28mm. Um, similar to the last one I did that was just uh, the simple house. This one is also a very simple kit. Um, the roof basically sits with these struts or supports on two um, hayloft panels that are um, inserted into the main level of the kit. Um, in general, um, I would say this is a very, very simple kit to build. I wasn't sure how simple it was going to be initially um, because it is a bit of a step up in size and price from the house kit that I just recently did, the North American house. But honestly, um, it took me probably 45 minutes to put it together. Um, for some people, they'd probably do it a lot quicker, but, um, but yeah, it was very easy. There was just some details to put in. Um, on the sides and the front of the house for the doors and things but beyond that um, the hardest thing was probably to get the first panel on to the roof I just found that you know it's constantly falling apart you know and then once you get it on the second panel is much easier um, but in general a really easy simple build um, this is sort of what it looks like now that I've I've finished just the assembly Now, I would compare the level of detail to the last kit that I just did, which was the house. Um, both this kit and the last kit had a little bit more detail on the exterior than the chateau that I did. Despite the fact that the chateau, which was a you know more of a premium kit in my mind, um, had like some nice, um, I guess, uh, railings you know on the outside. Um, you know there were some nice details. It was. Uh, except for the roof fairly solid you know I guess that was the look that they were going for but this one actually has wood paneling and it may be an element of just the design and what's needed for the for the particular design but I do like this extra level of detail um, these this fine cuts in here to create these um, really nice looking wood doors and wood siding for the barn and so I would still say that it has a greater amount of detail on the exterior um, despite whether the design dictates that or not. Um, so for the roof, these are the, the, the panels that I was talking about. It's fairly simple. Um, one of the things that I did you do, you might have noticed already that I've not attached the bottom yet, and that was intentional. Reason being, and I guess just a warning, I think this is fairly common sense and probably nobody would fall for this, but initially when I first looked at the directions, uh, one of the things I noticed that I was going to have trouble with if I just followed the directions and then I wanted to paint the interior that with these halofts here once you glue it together it's not, they're not meant to come out and so if you follow the instructions you'll end up with a glued bottom on here and then to really get in here to whether it be to spray or with your brush underneath I, I think would be very difficult and so my solution to that really is just to um, do everything like they say, including even putting it on the base when I finish, but don't glue it to the base. And so this way I can now paint from underneath. Um, I can paint whatever I, whatever I want in here, and then I can, I can do whatever I want on the base to a degree. Um, and then when I'm finished, I'll glue it on and uh, do any sort of final touch-ups or things that I need. Now, one of the things I am going to do is... Um, that I'm planning for this is to use, I've got a big thing of static grass flock of um, harvest gold and so I am gonna you know have some hay and things uh, or simulated uh, hay on the floor um, and I'm planning on sculpting some hay bales, uh, a couple of hay bales and just maybe some mounds of hay um, perhaps even with a pitchfork, I haven't really thought about it yet, I'm not sure if I've got a pitchfork laying around I can use but I can probably just make one myself, um, but I'm so I'm planning on doing that, um, and I'll probably just scatter some of this static grass flock on the floor in certain areas, um, 
one of the things that I'm a little undecided about is the um, the doors because I, I've assembled this to actually have the doors on, but what the directions say is that at any point, you know, you can these all of these doors are removable. One of the things that's really cool is the doors are see-through. I, I actually just noticed that now, even though I knew they were because I actually punched out all the little things that were in them. Many of them fall out themselves, but you have to kind of take the slats out yourself. Just it's really easy. Just these are the slats, and I just took they almost fall out, and then I just use one of the slats and just kind of move them out. But that's actually a kind of a nice look there. Um, that you can sort of see in. But I was debating of just removing it all together. I think initially the reason I didn't when I built it is it is really nice looking like you have to put these slats on here and this trim. But at the same time there's a certain amount of charm to just the open barn door that you can see in. Um, so I'm a little undecided. Now long before um, opening this package, I, I decided how I wanted to paint this. Um, I really want this to look like a weathered barn and um, I really want to try to take it a step further in my painting because I can honestly, um, if I was to just do this quickly without much thought, I would likely spray this like a dark gray and then do some shades of lighter gray to show the wearing of the wood because wood and you know, in my experience, old wood just has that tendency to have more of a grayish look rather than a brown look. Um, I'm going to throw up a couple of photos of some research I did. Not extensive, I just did some Google, Google pictures and just wanted to look at some old barns, but I'll just show you a little bit about where my inspiration is going for this. Particularly the first two photos are the ones that I'm kind of looking at the most. And you'll see there are the ones with the open barn doors as well. So I'll show them here. So when looking at these photos, um, you can see that the wood is actually a little more complex than just weathered gray. There are a number of areas where the natural wood color either remains or damage to the wood. I suspect acute damage you know, to the wood removes the gray surface and shows some of the lighter color underneath or the more natural color underneath. Um, whatever the reason being, um, a more realistic look for me probably means actually having some browns in there and it not just being gray, a variation of gray. And so that's what I'm going to try to achieve with this one. Um, I really would like to have some similar look or at least inspiration like from these photos. So that's what I'm going to do and then what I haven't made a decision yet on whether I'm going to remove one or both of these doors so you can see in um, and have like minis go in just without the doors. Now access wise I don't really think it is much of an issue in that you know you do have the top here you can easily remove so I wouldn't be removing the barn doors just so the minis have access to the building but I do think that if I'm having a weathered look it may look kind of cool to have one of the doors just open. Um, what are your guys thoughts? Just, just interested uh, in what you think. Um, the sides of the house also do have access points, or excuse me, I called the house, but the barn have access points as well. And these wheels you can put anywhere you want, they're just decorative items. Sometimes they, people put them on the front or on the sides of the front. I just decided to put them on the sides, um, left them like that. I'm actually really um, looking forward to painting this one up. I've been looking forward to it. Um, I really think it's a nice kit so far. Um, like I had mentioned in my last video, that I did for the house, I'm going to be using the um, polyurethane Minwax, um, except this time I'm going to follow the, the instructions directly because last time I, I only did a light spray, um, which worked okay I think, like I think it held the primer afterwards even with the light spray, but I think this time I'm planning on just sealing this completely and doing several coats. It really didn't um, bother the detail last time at all. I suspect it's not going to this time either, um, but I'm going to do that rather than prime and I'm just going to go right to paint after using um, sealing it with the polyurethane. Um, so um, I will put up work in progress videos, uh, interested in hearing your guys thoughts, but really I would rate this kit as very good. Um, as I've said in the past, 
I really think Sarissa Precision puts out a great product at a really good price. Um, assembly time is just right for me, um, and uh, I really think that the level of detail is nice, you know, really relative to the price ratio. So, okay, talk to you guys later. Take care.